Welcome to Lambeau Field and uh, to our 26th uh, Fan Hall of Fame honoree announcement. We're very excited to have you all here today. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, USA Today, Local IQ, uh, for sponsoring this program. Our Fan Hall of Fame uh, program goes back 26 years now uh, to 1998, which is hard to believe that was 26 years ago, but uh, we have 26 uh, devoted fans who we have uh, uh, brought into the Fan Hall of Fame as members and honored them as devout and longtime Packers fans. So all of our finalists here uh, should be very proud and your friends and family who have supported you throughout the process, you should all be very proud uh, for making it here today. Give yourselves a round of applause. For 100 nominations received, so the finalists here were among those nominations, um, narrowed down to 10 finalists by the Fan Hall of Fame committee here at the Green Bay Packers. Uh, our voting ran from January 1st to J January 31st, um, and over 83,000 votes were cast online at Packers.com. So 83,000 votes from all over the country, all over the world. So that just goes to show the uh, the support that uh, all of the finalists here today have from all of their their friends and loved ones and their family. So very happy again to have you all here uh, to officially make the announcement for our 26th Fan Hall of Fame uh, honoree. I'd like to invite up Packers President and CEO Mark Murphy. Mark. Thank you, Katie. How's everybody doing today? So I don't, I see a lot of green and gold. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, it's great. Thank you all for coming out today. And it's really an honor. And I'm really pleased to announce the newest member, as Katie said, the 26th member of our Packers Fan Hall of Fame. We're really unique. Uh, we're the only team in the league that has a Fan Hall of Fame. And actually, probably the only one that could ever have one. Just, well, just how many of you are also owners? All right, I figured it would be. Uh, we'll have another stock sale soon, so we can get, we can get everybody. Now we at uh, we are so fortunate in our organization to have the kind of support that we do. Um, every team in the league says they have great fans, but uh, I think we're the only ones that can say that we have the best fans. The way you come to Lambeau Field is tremendous, but I tell you, there's nothing better than going to an away game and having the a home team have to go to the silent count because the Packer fans are so loud. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a huge advantage. <laughs> Give yourselves a round of applause. So this is uh, always one of our favorite days uh, here within the Packer organization. Just uh, so unique. And we're really fortunate to honor some of our most dedicated fans here today. And happy to see family members and supporters. Uh, I know that uh, you're all in it together. You're all great Packer fans, and we appreciate it. I, I do want to give special thanks to a number of uh, people from the Packers, within the Packers. Uh, you heard from uh, Katie, Katie Hermson. She's uh, actively involved in this. Uh, but also from our Milwaukee office, uh, who really has kind of headed up this program for a few years now, uh, May Hudson. May? And Drew Leckler. A round of applause for Drew as well. So we're proud to have uh, the uh, Packers, Pan Packers Fan Hall of Fame as a tribute to our fans and our passion. I would be remiss if I didn't also recognize uh, one of our Packer fans. Tom Grossi was just named the NFL Fan of the Year. Yes. Great, great story. He's done uh, tremendous things. I think he ended up raising about $200,000 for charity and uh, was honored <clears throat> at, uh, and recognized at the NFL Honors uh, Program as the Fan of the Year. And uh, he definitely, I think at some point, he will be considered for the, the Hall of Fame. All right, uh, we're all here. Uh, and now, uh, drum roll, please. I will. Uh, you take direction well. <laughs> All right. Well, actually, the drum roll should be the winner. So uh, we've got 10 finalists. I want to uh, introduce the 10 finalists in the 2023 Hall of Fame. Uh, and, and I apologize if I get some of these names wrong. We have a lot of 
uh, finalists who have challenging names. <laughs> that, I think that's the beauty of it. First, uh, from S. Wabanon, Wisconsin, uh, Larry Kitto. Larry. Uh, next, from Severn, Maryland, Jeff Paydon. Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, you weren't a Redskins fan? <laughs> <laughs> no way. All right, good. <laughs> All right, next. Terry Sportsman from Elgin, Illinois. I have to ask Terry, you're not, did you ever consider being a Bears fan? Never. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you live in Chicago, you despise the Bears if you're a Packer fan. <laughs> so now, I have to, I lived in the Chicago area, I lived in Evanston for five years. Um, I worked at Northwestern, and I actually became a Chicago Bears fan. But I have, I have learned the error of my ways. <laughs> Now, it's a great rivalry, and uh, I'll say that uh, it's been, you know, I think we've played, the Bears and the Packers have played each other in any two teams, and uh, it's, uh, it's a great rivalry. We really have great respect for the McCaskey family, but it is fun to beat the Bears. <laughs> All right, next, from Manitowoc, Wisconsin, Nancy Bollier. Nancy. <laughs> All right, from Racine, Wisconsin, Ken Stauffer. Stauffer. All right, next, uh, Lori Mueller from Elon, Wisconsin. Lori. She's got a Jerry Kramer, uh, got a Jerry Kramer jacket, or Jamie jersey, very nice, signed by Jerry, seven-time All-Pro. You've got it all there, yes. All right, next. Bruce Racer from Menominee Falls, Wisconsin. All right, next, from Sheboygan, Wisconsin, Dan Bogey, Bogan Shoots. All right, next, from Colorado Springs, Colorado, Chris Burris. Chris? Yeah. And I know she's not a Cleveland Browns fan. She's from Cleveland, Ohio. Angela Kimmel. Kimmel. Yeah. So uh, on behalf of the Green Bay Packers and our partner, USA Today Local IQ, the winner will receive the following. Acknowledgement as a 26th honoree into the Packers Fan Hall of Fame with their name permanently displayed in a place of honor and it's inside the Packers, our Packers Hall of Fame. Uh, they'll have four club seats to a 2024 Packers home game, four VIP, VIP pregame field passes for a Packers uh, 2024 home game, four passes to the Packers Hall of Fame, a $500 gift card to the Packers Pro Shop, a one-year subscription to PackersNews.com. You can read all of the Rich Ryman articles. <laughs> and now, drum roll please, yes. We'd like to officially announce that the winner of the 2023 Fan Hall of Fame honoree is Dan Bogey Bogenschutz from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Dan, would you like to come on up and say a few words? Pretty snazzy jacket you had there. <laughs> Dan, how about us say a few words? Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, oh. You have no idea what this means. Um, I want to thank. Oh boy. I'd like to thank Jamie York, Dean Klein, and Amy Bueller that are here. Will you please stand up? They are the ones that wrote the letter. Um, I definitely want to thank the Packers organization. I'd like to thank everybody that voted. I know I had people voting for me from all over the world. 
Um, it was really nice. I had people from uh, Australia and Canada, uh, Alaska. Um, it's not all over the world. And, uh, and everybody in the United States. Um, this really means a lot. I've met a lot of nice people over the years. Uh, a lot of people that have traveled with me. I run Packer trips for 36 years. I remember the time I slept outside in Minnesota for three days and two nights just to get 320 Packer tickets. And the next year I became a Viking season ticket holder and a Lions season ticket holder just to get my 320 Packer tickets every year <laughs> to go up there and then I would donate the other tickets to the boys and girls clubs um, from those states. Um, I've had a lot of people on my trips over the years that uh, have met each other, that are married to each other now, uh, that have become friends over the years and have traveled with these other people now that I've met on my trips. If it wouldn't be for all those people, I know I wouldn't be standing here right now. Um, I just, uh, this is an honor, you guys. This is really an honor. I want to thank my mom and dad are looking down. Um, they were at the ice bowl game. My mom ended up getting frostbit toes. Um, when my mom and dad passed away a couple years ago, I ended up finding the program book from the ice bowl game, and that's in my safe right now. <laughs> and uh, I have gone to Packer games since the uh, mid 60s. I can remember when the season was over, they used to pile the snow up against the rails. We could go on the field after the game by sliding down the hills, and we used to climb the goalposts. Uh, those were the fun days. Don't try to do it now. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, we are going to party in Sheboygan. I'd like to congratulate all our other nine. Um, it's nice meeting you guys. And uh, Bruce has been on my trips. That's where I got to meet Bruce. And uh, I got to meet the cookie lady <laughs> in Sheboygan one day in Myers. Uh, so again, thank you, everybody. Uh, this really, really means a lot to me. And uh, go Paco. Sure. Everybody calls me bogey. <laughs> yes. Are you going to get that tattoo? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, what he's talking about is I was interviewed on one of the television stations, and I joked and said that if I win this, I'm going to get my first tattoo. I am getting that tattoo. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I will be proud to have that Hall of Fame tattoo right on my arm for life, and uh, that will be really cool. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Anyone else, members of the media, any questions? Dan, a lot of the trips that you organized, how did that start? What was sort of the impetus for it, and, and how rewarding has that been over the last 36 years? It, I worked at Kohler Company. I was there for 40 years, retired from Kohler. And I was doing some Brewer games, and somebody said, hey, let's go to a Packer game. And I thought, where am I going to get tickets for a Packer game? Well, I was able to get 46 tickets the first year. And I took guys from work, and we went to a Brewer game, I mean, a Packer game. And then the next year, I went did another game. And then I had friends of friends that wanted to go. And next thing I know, I'm taking four buses to Minnesota. I'm taking four buses to Detroit. And next thing I know, I'm taking six buses to Minnesota, six buses to Detroit. And now I do flights. I took a group with me to London when the Packers were in London. That was an awesome time. And uh, it was 36 years now of just doing trips. And I, was, I just happened to stumble over some of my old flyers that I brought along today that I didn't realize for a while there I was doing seven trips a year, um, taking at least 110 to 320 people on one of the trips. And uh, over the years, I got to meet a lot of friends that have tickets. That was a little easier for me to have connections to get tickets to keep the cost down. I stumbled over one of my old flyers that I was shocked that my trip to Detroit, where I took 110 people first time, and with motor coach transportation, 
the game ticket, a party, and a sweatshirt for everybody, the trip was $179 a person. <laughs> if anybody right now can tell me where you can get a hotel for $179 a night, and this was for three days, and so prices definitely have gone up. Uh, but it's, you know, we traveled good. People, Packer fans do travel. And in Minnesota, when I did that with the 320 tickets, the girl in the office called me the day after the game and said to me, um, the president of the organization and the coach wanted to know how did 320 yellow shirts get put together in Minnesota Stadium and said that this will never happen again. And they changed their policy to have it that you could only buy four tickets if you stood out by the window. So she asked me, why don't you become a season ticket holder because you get to buy tickets in advance and they'll think you're a Viking fan and they thought that that way you can buy as many tickets as you wanted. And that's how I became a season ticket holder. I was never lucky enough to get a season ticket holder here, uh, but I've been to, there's only four stadiums I've never been to with groups. And uh, that's still my goal to hit everyone. I know I had a couple of people even here today asking me where are we going this year. I even brought a bus up here from Sheboygan. Uh, the people are over at Titletown right now are waiting. And uh, so this will be a nice celebration on the way home and then when I get back home. And uh, still it doesn't settle yet. <laughs> Thanks for the question. It sounds like organizing all these trips takes a lot of time and work. Why do you do it? It's a hobby. I don't hunt, I don't fish, I don't snowmobile. I don't have a cottage, I don't golf. I just don't, I just didn't have those friends. And I started doing this and that was my friends. And I, my wife and I pay for our own trip. It's not a job. Um, it's just neat meeting new people from all over now. I remember, I used to have a website that I don't need anymore. And I know that there was a guy that called me from Dallas that was coming up here for the Dallas game with a whole mess of guys. And they said, is that price for real? This is a trip for the bus and the game ticket and a party? I said, yeah. Um, can I come on your bus even though I'm from Dallas and a couple of the guys will be Cowboy fans and the rest will be Packer fans? And I said, sure. And he said, where's Sheboygan? <laughs> and he was flying into Milwaukee and he rented a car. I got him a hotel in Sheboygan right where the bus picks everybody up. And they jumped on and partied with us. And we came here and uh, they came back. And so that was an honor to have people that saw me on Facebook. And not in Facebook, I mean just through a website. And now on Facebook, everybody is on there and asking again, where are we going this year? As soon as the announcement was made who we're playing this year, we just don't know when we play them yet. So when that hits, I'm up all night, getting hotels, flights, buses, tours, just to get everybody together. And uh, it's been a really cool time. You have no idea how many people I've met over the years of thousands of people. And some of them aren't even here anymore. Um, but every year, this year, this, this last year was the first time I had my third generation of family that has been on my trips. Wow. So it's really cool. Dan, can you just tell me what your reaction was when you did get nominated, when you found out about it, and how you sort of... I didn't know anything about it. I got an email, and I thought it was a scam. <laughs> I honestly did. I yelled to the wife to come down and look at this story on, on the e email I got. And she started giggling. She said, it's for real. I knew all about it. I was sworn to secrecy. I'm shaking. She read the letter that they wrote. And I busted down crying. I just, it hit me so hard. And then Amy sent the letter that I didn't know the other one sent the letter. And that one was on a completely different way of looking at it because she's family. It's my sister-in-law. And uh, then it, it's the time waiting if you're selected to the top 10. And the day that happened, oh my, oh my. I'm running around the house looking for Pam. And uh, I says, oh my god, and I just broke down again. And uh, 
then I didn't want to tell anybody yet because I wanted to, when I saw my whole family at Christmas, I wanted to tell everybody at that time. And that's what I did. And then after that, I got on Facebook and it just lit up. And um, I would hope that we all get to find out maybe how many votes each one of us got. I mean, I think that would be pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, that's how it just, that's how it goes. <laughs> So I have a question. Yes. You work at Kohler and you not, do not play golf? I do not golf. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew Mr. Kohler and I know now David Kohler. And I go to all the shareholder meetings and I know David is on the board of directors. Yeah. And David is never on that stage. So when we have a picnic through Kohler Company, I always go up to him and say, hey, they had your name on the scoreboard, but I didn't see you on the stage. And he sent me an email after he heard that I was nominated as one of the top ten to congratulate me. So I thought that was really nice of Kohler Company to do that. And uh, working there 40 years and working 10-hour days and working six days a week and still finding time to throw all these trips together and, um, and all the other things that I volunteered in Sheboygan for, I look back at that and now that I'm retired, it's like, how did I ever do it? You know, But I'm still planning on doing this. Again, it's my hobby. Maybe someday I'll take up golf. <laughs> so, so we are going to officially invite you to a pep rally next year. Have you ever been to a pep rally on the road? Oh, yeah. uh, oh yes, I have. Okay. Yes, I have. Next year, I think we're going to have... We'll have a special place of honor for you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Go I think you'll be planning a trip to Brazil. If the Packers play there, I'll be going to Brazil. <laughs> I, can I can guarantee you that, and it won't be by bus. <laughs> I did have Southwest Airlines one year when I had almost a whole bus, I mean a whole plane just for our group, and she asked me, if you can find another 25 people, you can have the whole plane. So that is one of my on my bucket list right now to have the whole plane. I think that would be so cool to have Packers songs playing all the way. I was I already looked into when we get back to Indianapolis, uh, there's a train at least Milwaukee that takes you right to the hotel in downtown Indianapolis. And I already talked to them and they told me they would give us our own train car. Wow. And you talk about a party. <laughs> that will be the Packer music all the way to Indy. <laughs> Good? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.